Hello everybody and welcome to Miss Enjoy Spiritual Life Advice Channel. I am Miss Enjoy and I'm here to do the love and soulmate connection reading for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising and Venus and cross watchers are welcome here as well for April 16th through the 30th. This reading is not intended for singles. My readings are gender fluid and also apply to same sex couples. Simply choose the masculine or feminine energy that best applies to you. I do not read reversals. I use many decks as clarifiers. I do not tell you what zodiac signs you may or may not be dealing with because you may not know all the planetary placements within you or your partner's natal zodiac charge. I do not give outcomes because when dealing with love, every individual should rely on free will to make decisions in matters of the heart. I am simply here to enlighten and advise. I do, if, if I do not resonate with you, please feel free to seek another reader. There are w lots of wonderful readers and light workers out here who may have the message that is meant for you. Never allow a reading to ruin your energy. Thank you very much for being here. If you were here with me last week, then um, I need this deck. If you were here with me last week, then you know that I, up till now, I had been doing weeklies. And because I'm of my 3D job, it has picked up. We have kind of a on-season, off-season thing. And right now we're in the on-season and we're extremely busy and I'm shorthanded. So that's cut my time down a great deal. And so I'll be moving into doing bi-weekly readings. But um, in between, once I tackle this cold that I'm battling, I will be throwing in some extra bonus readings here or there and some fun stuff. And then I want to get in a regimen of doing some scheduled live chats so we can all get to know each other better. If we have any questions, um, I can answer different topics we can discuss and, you know, just um, may answer some questions really quick, yes or no, or, you know, one or two cartel questions for y'all or some really fun spreads. Um, um, is that it? I think that was all I really needed to say for this week. Okay, so Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, and Cross Watchers, you are also he welcome here. Um, and remember that, you know, especially if you're a Cross Watcher, these energies can interchange because I did Capricorn's reading and it was a third party situation where, like, the feminine energy was actually speaking to, like, like a side chick. And I didn't want to, like, offend a Capricorn as saying that may be you because it you know the energies are interchangeable so if you got a cross watcher watching and she's like involved with a married male capricorn then that message possibly was for her not necessarily a female so if you get what I, you know female capricorn so if you get what i'm saying the energies here are interchangeable and basically as you watch you should know like if the if the situation or what i'm saying resonates with you then you should know who you are within that situation and um i'm try not to offend anyone but the message i get to send is the message I get to send, and I'm going to send it. I, I really, you know, if you love it, stay. If you don't like it, go. I, I, you know, um, you got to be true to yourself and true to your message and true to spirit. So, and I also switched up my spread for this week. So, um, previously I was doing a situation, row for the situation of the relationship, overall situation. I was doing a whole row for the masculine and a whole row for the feminine. But this week I will be pulling one initial card only for the situation and overall energy of the entire relationship and then I'll be doing a, simply a row for the feminine energy and the masculine energy okay so let's get started Aquarius I'm going to ask spirit to please be with us <clears throat> and I guess excuse me I'm battling a cold I have almost no voice left but you guys are you and Pisces are my last two uh, zodiac signs to go so I'm almost home free all right I'm going to ask spirit, ancestors, gods, goddesses, guardian angels, and watchers to please be here with us to deliver a positive message and get my voice through these two readings. Spirit, please, today for Aquarius, for love and soul connections, April 16th through the 30th. And get one card for the overall energy of the relationship, spirit, please. And one card for the overall, and I do shuffle extensively off camera. Just that you know, nobody has time, like 20 minutes to sit here and while I shuffle each deck and you know, purify and sage and meditate and all that great stuff. So, but I do shuffle on camera as well so that we can get those energies up and through here. All right, 
spirits, ancestors, gods, goddesses, guardians, guardian angels. Please give us a good message. For Aquarius, love and soulmate connections. And one card for the overall energy of the relationship, sweet spirit. And, oh, you know, that card is just in like almost all of my readings. And I really, really, really don't like it. But this is the Five of Swords coming out as the overall energy of relationship. So we got some battling, possibly a little, um possible competition going on whether it's two people com competing for a love or two lovers that feel like they're competition to each other that's not a good energy but we'll see what we're going from here all right spirit can we get three cards for the overall masculine energy this week for aquarius april 16th through the 30th love and soulmate connection spirit for the masculine energy spirit, what is masculine feeling, thinking, and doing? For the week of April, weeks of April 16th through the 30th, spirit, what is masculine feeling, thinking, and doing? For the weeks of April 16th through the 30th, please, spirit, and the masculine energy, what is masculine feeling, thinking, and doing? Spirit, what is masculine feeling, thinking, and doing, spirit? Okay. All right, well, that's good. We've got the lover's card out of the gate. All right. All right. And then we've got a tower moment. Okay. Not always bad. Hang in there. And then we've got the page of cups. Okay. All right. There we go. That speaks volumes. That's wonderful. Tower moments are not always bad, people. No, no, no. All right, spirit. And I'm finding that my feminines, and I know, and like, in most of my readings, in most of my readings, I'll have a wonderful start for the masculine energy, and then my fems are all in their heads. And we do that. We have been so battered, some of us, and bruised, and scarred, and scorned, and just, we're just weary, and tired, and... And we have so much doubt and, and so much baggage and it's really hard to release those energies. But we've really got to get in the habit feminine of cleansing, leaving the past behind and cleansing our energies and healing before we move forward into another relationship or another situation. Because a lot of times we have good guys coming in and they're getting deflected and blocked because, you know... You're, we're stuck in our heads. We're stuck in the past. We're stuck in our luggage. All right, spirit. What are my feminines feeling, thinking, and doing? My Aquarius says for the weeks of April 16th through the 30th. Spirit. Resistance. Okay. What are my feminines feeling, thinking, and doing? For the weeks of April 16th through the 30th, spirit. What are my feminine feeling, thinking, and doing? For April 16th through the 30th. Spirit, what are my... It's much better. Feeling much better. What are my feminines feeling, thinking, and doing, Spirit? For the week of April... Weeks of April 16th through the 30th for my Aquarius. One more. One more shuffle. All right. Okay, so we have the Eight of Pentacles, okay? We have the Six of Cups, that's wonderful, that's lovely, lovely. And then we have the Ace of Swords, okay? Alright, that's good, that's good, that's good. Speaking that truth, speaking that truth, some, some communication needs to be done, okay? Alright, let's get some clarifying going here. Alright. Spirit, please clarify the Lover's card and the Masculine Energy. Spirit, please clarify the lover's card in the masculine energy. Spirit, please clarify the lover's card. As if it really needs any clarification. It really doesn't. But we're going to do that anyway. In the masculine energy. All 
Alright. Alright. We got the Fool card. Okay. And one more. And the Hermit card. Okay. Alright. That's good. That's good leading up to a tower moment. That's that's pretty good. Alright. Please clarify the tower. In the masculine energy, please, Spirit, cl clarify the tower for me, please. Tell me more about this tower moment. In the masculine energy, please, Spirit, please let us know more. Spirit, ancestors, gods and goddesses, in the masculine energy for this tower moment, please, Spirit. Because the tower moment, I always try to lighten everybody so that not only when you watch my readings, if you go on, to watch other people's readings or even if you you know decide that you want to get your own deck of cards and start you know playing with tarot yourself that you realize or know that what a lot of the meanings of the cards are and that um at least and sometimes i'll tell you that the technical meaning and because i am both a technical and intuitive reader i you know some cards mean some things to other readers will say you'll hear and you'll hear here other readers say for me this card means such and such and such and the tower moment, yes, it can be a big, tragic, bang, boom, pow event. And there's two people falling out of this card here. Okay, but um, sometimes it can simply be an epiphany, a waking up, an awakening, a realization. Or, you know, that moment where you realize, you know, when the lights come on and you be like, hey, I, I, need to, I need to do this. Or this isn't working. Or, you know, or, okay, this is a good thing. It's a mo It can be an epiphany, a moment of realization. A pivotal moment when something changes. Justice, okay? All right, and then we got the four of pentacles. All right, and then we'll put one more there. And the strength card, okay, okay. Okay, so here we've got the lover's card, the fool card, the hermit card. We've got the tower moment. Justice, Four of Pentacles, and the Strength card. Okay? Alright, we're going to go on here and let me just peek around the corner and make sure. Yeah, everybody can see those very clearly. Good, 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 good. Alright, and Spirit, clarify the Page of Cups in the Masculine Energy, please, Spirit. Clarify the Page of Cups in the Masculine Energy, please, Spirit. Clarify the Page of Cups in the Masculine Energy, please, Spirit. And if you watch my videos regularly and you wonder why I fumble with the I, I fumble with my cards a lot, first of all, it's because one reason is because I have short, fat fingers. The other thing is is that as I'm shuffling, I'm actually I actually shuffle with my eyes closed. It helps me tune in. It does. It helps me tune in. And like I had a water fountain. If you watch my first two weeks videos. And my water fountain died. And I'm a fire sign. So like I really need my water that like soothes me. I need to have my fire and my water on my altar. And like I've been nagging my masculine. I'm like um. Your, your queen needs a, a water fountain. Daddy. Your queen needs a water fountain. But he hasn't brought me one home yet. But I'm, I know he's going to do that. As soon as that check gets right. <laughs> So, um, I do that hint out there, you know. He'll get me one. It's been about a week since I've lost it. Okay. Alright. Clarify the page of cups for me. That really doesn't need much clarification either, but we will in the masculine. Clarify the page of cups for me. Spirit, please clarify. page of cups for me and then my first I, I was married for I was with my first husband for about 20 years and then we were married for like 16 years and um he was blind he lost his eyesight in like 2011 and so I learned a lot about, like, I can move around my house, I can move around a house, I can move, I can do things from learning from him and, you know, watching him as he went through his transition into learning how to navigate his world without sight. I mean, I mean, he wasn't even legally blind, people. He was 100% no light perception, um, as they call it, having no light perception. Uh, the optic nerve had completely died. So that's like cutting off the light socket to your eyes. Um, 
And so I learned a lot about being blind and navigating and feeling my way around things. So I can I can pull off a lot without having to see. And then I'm the mom of twins, so I'm very like I can multitask. So like the things I can do, and people are like, how do you do that? But it, it it's 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 about learning to trust your inner senses more so than your outer senses because you think it would be the end of your world but it really wasn't he was really awesome and led a really great life after the fact so all right let's move on from that okay all right we're clarifying the page of cups here all right so we've got the six of pentacles and the tower moment again uh-oh and then the page of cups again ha uh ha -huh. Oh, oh, okay. And I need one more on that because I was just. And then the Ace of Pentacles. Oh, okay. So, and sometimes you that'll happen. It's like, and and I'm gonna start listening to that. It as a reader, as an intuitive reader, if you're listening to your spirits and your guides, <coughs> excuse me. Sometimes you get an inkling, like when I said this doesn't need, really need clarification, and then it will bring you back to the same card, and you'll see a lot of the same cards repeat themselves, and it's like spirit saying, no, I told you, so quit asking questions, and just read. So I'm going to learn to do that, because like it really said that I didn't really need to clarify the two end cards, which were the lover's card and the page of pentacle, I mean page of cups, but... I did anyway, and it just still really brought me back to, it, and I mean, it, I got a little enlightenment, but it still basically said the same thing. And now we're going to move on and clarify the feminine energy. Spirit, please clarify the Eight of Pentacles and the feminine energy, please. Please clarify the Eight of Pentacles and the feminine energy, please. Please clarify the Eight of Pentacles in the feminine energy, please. I'm getting a message from Spirit that this is a this is a past life connection. I'm getting yeah. Clarify the Eight of Pentacles in the feminine energy, please. Please clarify the Eight of Pentacles in the feminine energy, please. Oh my. I don't know if I want to say that. Please clarify. I'm getting that somebody in a past life. While you may be lovers in this incarnation. That you were mother and son in a past life. Spirit, please clarify the eight of pentacles. And it's why your energies are off. And there's some... Okay. Alright. Alright. Okay. And so we've got the Three of Wands. And the Four of Pentacles. Here. And then the Five of Wands. Okay. Alright. Clarify the Six of Cups. For me and the Feminine Energy. Please so spirit clarify the Six of Cups. In the feminine energy, please, spirit. Please clarify the six of cups. In the feminine energy, please, spirit. I have a feeling about what cards are going to come out here. Please clarify the six of cups. In the feminine energy, please, spirit. Please clarify the six of cups. In the feminine energy, please, spirit. <laughs> And the Eight of Cups. The Ten of Swords. And the Seven of Wands. My goodness. And then the Ten of Cups. What the heck? Okay, Spirit, please clarify. The Ace of Swords. In feminine energy, please, Spirit. Clarify the Ace of Swords. 
Can feminine energy please, spirit? Please clarify the Ace of Swords and the feminine energy please, spirit. Please clarify the Ace of Swords and the feminine energy please, spirit. Please clarify the Ace of Swords and the Feminine Energy, please, Spirit. Okay, I get it. And the Eight of Wands. The High Priest. The Shadow Side. The Star Card. And the King of Wands. Okay. All right, so I rarely have, I, well, I, I, I don't like to, I should say, deliver a message or advice, because I never like to tell, like I said, it, you, you, you have to do what's of your own free will. However, I would have to advise that, okay, because what I was getting from Spirit as I was shuffling is that, and maybe that's why I thought about my first husband in this reading, because I always felt like that might be the case with him, with he and I, because he was indeed my soulmate, okay, but We, it was more like when we did not live under the same household, when we were not restricted to each other, we were much better people. Okay, there was a point where we engaged in a polyamorous relationship, a, a polygamous actually, sort of, sort of, kind of, sort of, kind of thing. Where actually, um, we had a third party involved. I had a girlfriend. And, um, or I should say we had a girlfriend. Because he loved her as well. He loved her as well. But it was more of a, of a, of a soul connection between she and I. While they identified, they got along, they clicked, they're cool. The, the soul connection there was between she and I. So that made him very uneasy. As you can imagine, for any man, that's your, like, fantasy. You embark on that threesome, and then your woman is now in love with the woman. And that, that's what happened. And, um, uh, and actually, this is so odd, because he was an Aquarius. Wow. Okay. So, <laughs> um, okay, so what ended up happening was, um, he and I had children, and she had none as of yet. She was a single, beautiful female. And um, she went on to get married. Our, our romantic connection ended at that point she, for lots of reasons. Social reasons, personal reasons. But she had to go on and have a family. Okay? And that was her path. So I had to let go of that situation. Let go of her. While still to this day, I love her. We love each other very dearly. And... We will always have a connection. Always. We have a very deep psychic connection. And um, I used to connect with her a lot on the 5D. But I, well, I'll talk about that later. But anyway. Um, um, and then at another point in our relationship. We, we kind of had an open relationship. Because there was someone that he was into. That he kind of didn't want to stop seeing. And I was just like unfulfilled and going through my own thing so we kind of had an open relationship where we we dated who we chose but we were still focused on our home and each other to a certain extent and then toward the end and several times throughout our relationship we actually split up and kind of started to see other people to a certain extent and we're living in separate households and we're just awesome awesome great friends and he was always, at, at no point during our entire journey of that 20 years, were we ever not best friends. He was always my very best friend. 
So, um, even when we were with other people, if we had an issue or a problem, even with that other person, we always talked to each other. And I always got the feeling that even though, okay, because we have awesome, 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 awesome offspring. Our children are like kick-ass kids, really are. And we that is may have been the one reason the universe actually brought us together in a sexual, romantic type of relationship. But I always kind of got the feeling that maybe it may possibly have not supposed to been, had not supposed to have been a romantic relationship then maybe we should have gotten more into a brother-sister type of relationship or or something of that nature. Because that's what a lot of the energy we would give off a lot of times. He was a really handsome guy. He had all the most beautiful, deep, awesome eyes. And a lot of times women, and, and he had beautiful hair. And just He was just a beautiful man. And a lot of times women would approach me and be like, is that your brother? And I'd be like, nah, bitch, that's my man. But you know what? <laughs> um, and vice versa. And so we gave off that vibe. And, and I kind of always got the feeling that even though I know he was also a soulmate connection, that maybe in a past life, we were something different. And that that kind of like weeded into this, this lifetime. While we were still supposed to move in each other's circles, because even our, even our meeting and our knowing each other and some of our family members knew each other before we ever met or knew of each other was like very faded. It was a very faded thing. Like my dad and his uncle were friends with my stepdad and my uncle and their family and and then our families are, it, it's a very long story. And then even when I moved to the town where he was from, and I had never been in all my life, I had family there that was linked to my family from where I was originally from, from New York, and family that I had there. And, and it was a very faded, tied in, it was clearly a life circle thing, because we move in packages, okay? Everyone that surrounds you in your current life has surrounded you in many, many lives before. And yes, new people come to play and new people come into your circle eventually, but those energies always intertwine and you still move within the same soul circles. Lifetime to lifetime. Excuse me, I'm still talking, but I gotta do something. And then, um, so that's what we mean when we say past life connections. And I'm getting the and I'm getting the message here, basically that this is a soulmate connection. It really is a soulmate connection, and the lovers card is here. But from the fool card being behind it, I'm feeling that it really needs to be looked at in a different way. And I feel like that's why that this tower moment here, the judgment is here because a different decision needs to be made about it. Then we've got the four of pentacles. And so, you know, we, we have some people that are... And then down here, and there's love. There's love. Because we've got, on in the masculine energy, we have the page of cups up here. And then we've got the six of coins. Which, you know, everything... It, and then another tower moment, and then the page of cups again. So it's like, masculine keeps trying to make this offer of love. But it's just not working out. I'm just not getting that these energies are working out. It's some type of fight or struggle or competition that's going on. And I feel like that comes from a past life energy. That's what I'm getting. It comes from something, some cycle of karma, something that went on before that in, in a previous life that you two at this point really aren't even aware of or even why it's affecting you that way. And that's the message that I'm getting from spirit. Because down here, as I said, it's always suns and rainbows. It's always, it's always okay, at least, till I get to the feminine row. We're so skeptical and so in our heads. So we've got the feminine down here with the eight of pentacles worrying about money. Um, trying to move forward, trying to move forward, leaving to, uh, to, leaving, to having to leave some things behind and branch out, um, having to hold on to what you got, to buckle down. This is kind of a, 
a selfish not giving energy here with the four of pentacles and then the five of wands here which again speaks of a conflict or a competition then we move on here to the six of cups there's love okay there's a connection there is a connection somehow and there's balance and then what i like about this card is in the bottom corner there's the head a little cat just sticking up out of the grass and i cats are very you have cat people and you have dog people okay and every every all animals all creatures all people everything has their role in this life i'm trying to keep my reading short but this one is it was really needed a little more introspection this is kind of deep um Cats are guardians, okay? Your cat can look at you and look into your soul. Your cat knows who you were in your life, last lifetime, okay? Your cat may have been your familiar in your last lifetime or someone to you or your guardian or your watcher. They're called your familiars in the world of, of Wicca and what we believe that, you know, they're sent to watch over you. They're sent to guide you. You know, they're sent to teach you something and, and to, to protect you and to look so, so that, and, and they're also sent to teach you messages as well, give you messages as well, to teach you things as well. So you, to le learn lessons as well and to help guide you through that. So while this is, with the Six of Cups here, while this is a soulmate connection, this definitely is a love connection of some kind, that cat just speaks to me. They're also... Time moves very different in animals for a reason. And if you Google it or if you, you, you know, there's lots of people who claim that their cat either A, time jumps or teleports. Okay, and you probably think I'm totally, total wackadoo, but we have a cat that does this. My masculine himself was, I always thought that he was skeptical of the supernatural, but like, as of the past, he's had some awakenings and some upgrades, and he brought it to my attention that our cat was time jumping or teleporting and leaving and going somewhere. Okay, because she does it about the same time nightly. All right? <laughs> so, and yes, we've noticed the pattern, and our other cat notices the pattern. Okay? And because uh, he basically lets us know that she is gone. It's our female cat that does it. Shuri. And um, so that cat, to me, is saying that so there's something deeper going on there with that. It's not just a hat. It, it, there's a deeper connection or a deeper... Because you've got two kids. You've got the male and the female here. And there's a connection. But they're not adults in that picture. You know, they're kids. But this is still indicative of a soul connection to me with the Six of Cups. Because that's a balance of love and a deep love, okay? An equal give and take. And then we have the Eight of Cups. So this is someone thinking about walking away from this connection because maybe something doesn't quite feel right. Because in the Eight of Cups, those, those are good cups of love. They look sturdy and upright and pretty. But her back is turned. Her back is turned on those cups. And she's looking up at the moon and the stars. Like, I have all this, but something is still missing. Something is still missing. So somebody's unfulfilled here. Somebody's unfulfilled. And somebody feels stabbed in the back by this. You can't, but that, and to me, I'm getting, I'm getting, you can't, they can't, you can't understand why. That's what I'm getting. I keep hearing, you can't, they, you can't understand why. You can't understand why. And you still feel, and this is my loner card. To me... The Seven of Wands, not only is it a defensive card, it, it means you, you're battling, you're, you're doing something by yourself. There's one guy with one wand, and there's six wands coming in at him. That's a battle nobody wants to fight. Nobody wants to fight somebody six on one. This is not the WWE. We, do, we are not trying to be, you know, in, in a cage match with six other people and one wand, one stick, and that's all we got. We don't have a tag team partner. We ain't got shit. We just feel we're fighting this battle alone. And, but then at the end of this particular clarification or set of cards here, we've got the Ten of Cups. 
So what I'm really getting from this is that, and just like I don't, I'm getting that you don't understand. That makes sense. You feel like there's this love, there's this connection. Why don't I feel fulfilled and happy? Why don't I fulfill, feel feel fulfilled and happy? Because your masculine is up here trying. He's up here trying. And he's realized that there's a love and soul connection. But it's, it's still just something is missing. I'm really getting something is missing. And you don't understand. That's what I keep hearing. Okay. All right. So we're going to move on to this last deck of uh, last. So now we've got the Ace of Swords. Okay. And so to me, this is saying you, you need to speak your truth. We need to talk about this situation. <coughs> we need to communicate. <coughs> we need to take some action. We need to take some action. We've got the high priest and some counseling. We need to seek some counseling. We need to seek some counseling. Um, we've got the shadow side. So there's some toxicity going on. There's definitely some toxicity going on. And then we've got the star card and the king of wands. All right. So I'm really getting that. Yeah, there's love. There's love, there's affection, there's a soulmate connection, but in all honesty, with the King of Wands wrapping up the end of that spread, and the star card right before that, which is wish fulfillment, somebody's hoping and wishing and praying for something, why aren't y'all fucking? I'm sorry, that question just, it, it just popped into my head, and I have to deliver the message that Spirit, Spirit has said, why aren't we, there's a disconnect. And everything is really all good, but you're feeling like there's something else feminine going on because there's no actual physical intimacy going on. There's a lack of intimacy, and y'all ain't getting your freaky deaky on. Okay? It's not going down in the bedroom. All right, and I don't know. Like I said, I've got we've got the five of, of swords here. Is it some type of competition? Is it a control thing? Is somebody is withholding sex? Somebody is withholding sex, and I'm not getting from the masculine that. Ah. So, it's, it's masculine is, A, struggling financially, or you're making a little more money than masculine, and he may feel disconnected from the situation. And this could be the reason why, you know, yeah, that's it. It was a tower moment after the six of, the six of coins. Is letting me know that there's a financial imbalance there. But there's love. There's love between the both of you. And ultimately, everything's basically okay. But feminine, you're like, what the heck is going on? Because, okay. That's what's going on. Alright? This connection, despite the past life connection... The difference in that relationship from the past life and the and the, and the present carnation, it can still work. This can still work. This is still a viable, wonderful, happy, prosperous relationship. Okay, and I know that you're feeling a little bit alone right now, feminine, and you're feeling emotionally unfulfilled here with the with the the eight of cups followed by the ten of swords. And you might feel like he's out there creeping around. That's why we have the King of Wands here. But he's not. Okay? So don't let it... Don't get out of your head. Get get out of your the, the toxicity of it. The, the bad. Stop thinking that it's bad. It's not like that. You He's having some financial issues. Or he's not where he quite wants to be financially right now and that affects that you know that affects the masculine 
that affects them. Because whether we want to acknowledge that, yes, we're in a generation where gender, everybody's gender fluid, and nobody wants to be gender specific, and nobody wants to wear a label, and, and this role shouldn't be assigned to this person and that. But in the truth of the situation, the masculine energy is usually the financial provider and the protector, okay? I always felt that was slightly off because you look and when you look at nature, especially when you look at like the pride of lions or, you know, felines that the feminine is usually the, you know, the one that goes out there and brings home dinner. And it's getting to the point in our current society where our, our women are the ones that are really, and then sometimes it's not even that we make more. It's just maybe that we manage money a little bit better or we're a little more committed to our jobs so we get a little further, a little faster. And we're just a little more stable-minded because, well, A, we got people and babies to take care of, you know? And society has conditioned us to know that if something happens where our masculine cannot, we got to have their back. It's not a society where it's all on them anymore. But they still feel that weight. And it affects their little thing. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I know that when my masculine was having financial problems and was out of a job and looking for a job and was not being successful, even if they're having issues in the workplace, were stressed in the workplace. Their dick is not getting hard. I'm sorry. Their mind is on the job. It's on that check that's not going to be big enough or that's not coming at all or that, you know, they need to work for or the promotion they're trying to get or the promotion that they didn't get or the boss that's a total ass and they're scared that they might get fired any day or the job that they can't find or the other interview that they went on this week that they still haven't gotten a call back from yet or she makes more money than me and I want to be able to provide for her and... And, you know, th those things weigh on them. Those things weigh on them. Most of us are good to go. Even if you have an issue with feminine dryness, if you throw some lube down there, it's on and popping. You get what I'm saying? But for a man, there's more to it than that. There's more to it than that. And my masculine says this to me all the time. You can just throw your legs open and you're ready. It's not like that for us. It's not like that for them. That thing got to rise. And their mind has to be in the right place in order for it to rise. They're not really not. Now, you got some that's just horny little thumpers and you can blow on it and it'll pop up. But no matter what they're going through. But to me, that's not a conscious dude. Alright? To me, that's not a conscious thing. A, a real man... A real masculine, a real divine masculine <sighs> needs to have his head in the right space before he can lay that pipe right. Okay? So feminine, what I'm going to need you to do is relax. I'm going to need you to be strong and be patient with your masculine. I'm going to need you to understand that your connection is very special and very different. And you may have some energies that make you feel uneasy. If I pause, it's because the train gets too loud. And you may have some energies that make you feel off at times and somewhat disconnected occasionally. But a lot of times it's because they're dealing with something. And this, this masculine loves you. That's what I'm getting up here. With the, with the Page of Cups, okay? And twice. And then the Ace of Pentacles here is a new offer coming in for him. So, hang in there. I'm going to pause for a second. Okay, all right. Train has moved on down the road some, and I'm back. Okay, so be patient, feminine. That's basically what I was saying. Be patient. You know, don't let this take you to a bad headspace. 
Uh, do not get the... I'm not getting the message at all that there's a third-party situation. There's no sign of a third-party situation here. There's no sign of a side chick here, okay? I'm simply seeing that Masculine definitely knows that th that you that he loves you. We've got the lover's card here. There's definitely a divine connection, okay? And he needs to look at things differently and, you know, do some inner reflection himself. Um, I'm getting down here, of course, with the High Priest card that you really need to seek. <coughs> Excuse me. Seek some guidance. <coughs> or some counseling. So that you can get some positive movement and communication going on. You need to do something. Take some action. In this relationship. But just know that... <coughs> It's going to be okay, and I know that you wish, you know, that it was a little more active, that he was a little more in the King of Wands energy right now, mm, that phallic energy, <clears throat> but you're not really, you're worried about nothing here, and we do that a lot, we do that a lot, fems, we stress, we worry, because our biggest fear is losing our love, is losing our masculine, okay, but he needs to understand that you don't think, you need to reiterate to him that you don't think any less of him because of whatever this is he may be going through financially, work-related, or otherwise, stress-wise, or whatever he's got going on. And that it is not a competition if you make more than him. That it is not his money, your money, it's ours. And that you do not think less of him. He is still your masculine. You still see him as your big, strong your big strong man, that big strong lion, and <clears throat> simply continue to nourish your connection, continue to communicate. Um, I know that you're feeling unfulfilled right now, but as I said in one other video that I did for the past week, I forget who it was, We, when you're in a long-term relationship and a real soul connection that deserves that work, that time, and that effort, that there are cycles. Okay, they, they, they come and go. These cycles come and go. There are times of stress, times of stagnation. You have to go through things. Nobody's life is perfect. Life is just a series of issues and problems that you constantly get handed in order to solve, to learn, to grow, and to evolve. Okay, and in any marriage, these energies come and go. The stagnation comes and goes. The hot and heavy... Um, feeling periods of, of renewal, of honeymoon periods come and go. Those cycles come and go. You just have to hold on. You just have to hold on and you have to have faith. But don't worry, my Aquarius women, don't worry. Don't worry. It's going to be okay. Alright, so you're feeling all of this negativity. And you're justified in how you feel. You're definitely justified in how you feel. You just may need to buckle down. And, you know, pinch your pennies for a little while. You know? Um, watch your finances. I'm getting that. Support your masculine. Let you let him know that you are there for him. And it's going to be okay. And get yourself a couple of vibrators. And maybe when he's at work and he's not looking, you know, sneak and get your freaky deaky on with yourself. Have some one time, some me time. Do what you got to do. I never go outside your marriage, especially when you've got that wonderful soulmate connection there, okay? Don't let it turn dark. Stay in your power. Stay in your power. All right? That's about the best advice that I can give you guys for this week. This is a really good reading. I'm glad to see that there is no third-party situation going on other than a little financial stress and variation. And, you know... He'll get past it. He will get past it and get back to being your, your stallion. And you will get back to a hot and heavy period. It will return. The heat will come on. Okay? Just this too shall pass. Okay? All right, feminine. Nurture him. You know, maybe get him in a little extra head. All right? Love y'all. See you next week.
A list of services provided and instructions for making appointments, payments, or donations is provided in the channel description as well as in the description of each video. If you like my channel, please don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, and share. And always remember to enjoy life.